Courage, kids, you're here just in time. I was about to go on our next adventure. I made sure to pack my toothbrush, my favorite stuffed animal, and lots of sandwiches. If you didn't pack a bag yet, that's okay. No worries, we're not really going anywhere. We're just gonna need to make sure we have our imaginations handy. So close your eyes with me and remember what it felt like to be on the go, to fly in the air, to go on adventures, to leave your house. Yeah, I'm kind of forgetting what that felt like too, but no worries. I think our imaginations together is gonna be enough to get us to where we have to go. So before we get going, let's go over our travel guide. Okay, Bridge Kids, we have a pretty busy travel guide. Travel guide number one, listening ears on. Let me see those listening ears. Number two, listen to your teachers. Today, that's your moms and dads. And number three, the more participation, the more fun. And number four, you can pause and come back to us at any time. All right, Bridge Kids, are you ready? Let's go. Final boarding call for flight 910. Again, this is the final boarding call for flight 910. Oh, it looks like it's time for us to go, Bridge Kids. Are you ready? Let's fly. I don't know about you, but what better way to enjoy an airplane ride than some music? So let's stand up, let's dance, and let's get our worship on. I'm only human, I'm not like you. I tell a lie, you tell the truth. I change my mind, you speak, you act, you keep your promises. He says he's with me I know he'll always be a promise maker Promise keeper He says he loves me I know he'll always be a promise maker Promise keeper I'm only human I'm not like you I tell a lie You tell the truth I change my mind You speak, you act he says he's with me I know he'll always be a promise maker Promise keeper He says he loves me I know he'll always be a promise maker Promise keeper Dance, now feel the beat Everybody rock, get on your feet Dance, now feel the beat Everybody rock, get on your feet Dance, now feel the beat Everybody rock, get on your feet Dance, now feel the beat Everybody rock, get on your feet I say promise, you say maker Promise, maker, promise, maker I say promise, you say keeper Promise, keeper, promise, keeper I say promise, you say maker Promise, maker, promise, maker I say promise, you say keeper Promise, keeper, promise, keeper He says he's with me I know he'll always be a promise maker Promise keeper He says he loves me I know he'll always be a promise maker, promise keeper. He says he's with me. I know he'll always be a promise maker, promise keeper. He says he loves me. I know he'll always be a promise maker, promise keeper.
Wow, road crew, that was some awesome worshiping and dancing. Our GeoQ app is sending us a list of our location clues. To help us figure out where we are today, I called two very special friends. We can help you with that. Hey, road crew, it's Zach. And Drayson. Hey, Drayson, want to read our first clue? You bet. Clue one, this country has one river, and without it, it will be all sand. Hmm, I'm interested to hear what the other clue might be. I want to know what else this country has to offer besides well dirt. Clue two says the wrappings of just one mummy found here could stretch for a mile. Okay, I think I know where we are, but just to be sure, what's our last clue? Clue three, the oldest and largest pyramid existed, existent is located in this country. Oh, I totally know this one. The Pyramid of Giza is the oldest and largest, even one of the seven wonders of the world. World crew, do you think you know where we are? Egypt. You're right, Egypt. Let's log into our GeoQ app. Marabon, my mummies! That's how the Egyptians say hello in their native language, Arabic. Well, I may have added the mummies part, but you get the point. I'm Wander Round, and at your request, I'm here to confirm you are, in fact, on the continent of Africa in the country of Egypt. Welcome to the land of the Desert Pyramids, GeoQuesters. You may be wondering why you've wandered all the way over to the land of sand and Nile crocodiles. Well, why don't we ask our mummy friends? I guess they're keeping things under wraps. In the meantime, you could get to work on building a pyramid. After all, it took 20,000 workers 23 years to build one. So for us, just doing the math, carry the one times five, divide that by 26 for some reason. And um, well, we'll leave that to the professionals. Phew, woo. You may notice it gets a little hot out here in the desert, and if you're holding out hope for some rainfall, keep on dreaming. Egypt only gets about one inch of rain per year. Yeah, you heard that right. 365 days and only one inch? That's like half a pinky's worth of rain. Temperatures can be a scorcher, getting up to 114 degrees in the hottest part of the summer. So even if that rainfall did come, I'm guessing it would just dry right up. Egypt isn't a completely dry land though. There is a river that runs through it called the Nile. And while that houses crocodiles, Egypt is also home to a variety of other animals like jackals, gazelles, and cobras. Ugh, no thank you. How about something a little cuter? Did you know that here in Egypt, cats are considered to be a sacred animal? Take that, cobras. Mm. Enough meowing around. I bet you're ready to find out what souvenir you're looking for today. It's a good one too. I've loaded the coordinates into GeoQ. You'll find your souvenir at 30 degrees to 39 degrees north interstate highway. Well, if that's not enough, you know I've got you covered. Wander around doesn't make you wander around. Here's a few hints to get you going. Don't judge it by the outside or you'll miss half of the prize. It's the color of the sands and back in the beginning, you'll find it deep within the tombs. Best of luck to you. Come back once you found the souvenir. Wow, Road Crew, this souvenir seems really cool. I'm excited to find it. Okay, going back over our clues. The first one is that if we judge it by the outside, we'll miss half the prize. That must mean there's more than one part of it. That could be anything from a book to a box. But then the second clue says it was the color of sands. Now, living in Florida, we see lots of sand, so we should know what that color is. These Egyptian sands are kind of like a golden brown color. So maybe we're looking for something gold or brown? The final clue from Juan said that in the beginning, we would have found it deep in the tomb. Pyramids were the first tomb, so I guess we're looking for something you'd see inside a pyramid. 
do you guys think that maybe we're looking for a mummy? I think so. I think the souvenir we're looking for is a mummy. Let's see if we're right. Whew, I was starting to think you got swept away in the sands of time. Maybe stuck in a sand trap or worse, eaten up by some quicksand. Whoa! Whew. But no, you didn't get wrapped up in anything like that. Get it? Wrapped? Like the mummy you found? <laughs> Anyways, the whole mummy thing is super interesting. When someone died, ancient Egyptians would cover the body in a powder, wrap it up in layers of linen, and then place the body down into a coffin. Those Egyptians were trying to care for those who died. But do you know who cares for us the most? And can even heal us when we aren't feeling too hot? God! That's right, God is the ultimate healer and still heals people today. In the Bible, there was a king named Hezekiah. King Hezekiah was a pretty young guy when he first took over and ended up being one of the greatest kings of all time. Yeah, I said it, he was a goat, like the king goat. Old Hezi remained faithful to God, and because of this, he was successful in everything he did. When King Hezekiah was around 39 years old, he became very sick. And we're not talking like the case of the sniffles, no way. He was so sick that God sent him a message through a prophet named Isaiah. The message told Hezekiah to go ahead and get things in order, that he wasn't going to get better and soon he would die. So you can imagine this was pretty tough news to hear. The king wasn't ready to wrap things up quite yet. So he prayed to God and asked him to remember how faithful he had always been and how he always served God with his whole heart. Right after Hezekiah finished praying, God gave Isaiah another message for the king. This next message was quite the game changer. The message told Hezekiah that God had heard his prayers and, um, drum roll please, decided to heal him. That's right, God told Hezekiah that in three days, the king would go to the temple and then God would add 15 more years to his life. King Hezekiah was a little bit of a skeptic though and was like, prove it. He asked Isaiah for a sign, you know, so that God would prove he'd actually do it. And without missing a beat, Isaiah offered the king two options. Do you want the sun shadow to move forward 10 steps or back 10 steps? Hezekiah knew it was pretty easy for the shadow to move forward 10 steps, so he picked the other option. Well, challenge accepted. God made the shadow go back 10 steps and the king knew he would be healed. Hezekiah decided to go to the temple after three days and ended up living for 15 more years. 15! That's because God kept his promise and healed Hezekiah. God has many names, and one of those names is healer, because, well, God's a healer. You see, God really cares about us. He really wants us to be healthy physically, like with our bodies, emotionally, with our feelings, mentally, with our thoughts, and spiritually, in our relationship with him. That mummy you found is a great reminder that God can heal any sickness we have. He may not always heal in the way that we would choose, but we can be sure that God is our healer. The best of the quest isn't over yet. We've got lots of ground to cover, and I can't wait to see you next time. It's really amazing to me that God can heal all kinds of hurts. He can heal us when we're hurt in our bodies, and he can also heal our hearts. God knows every single thing we need, and when we need him to heal us, nothing is too big or too small for him to do. So road crew, say this with me, God is my healer. Great job. All right, road crew, it's memory verse time. Our memory verse is found in Psalms chapter nine, verse 10. And it says this, those who know your name trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Will you stand up and say that with me? Ready? Those who know your name, trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Psalms 9, 10. 
great job, you guys. What a powerful verse to learn. Remember, no matter where you look, if you search, God will always find you. All right, road crew, let's play a little memory game. You have 30 seconds to stare at the picture and try to remember every item. You ready? You have 10 seconds to try and figure out what's missing. Do you have an idea what's missing? If you guessed camera, you're right. Now let's see if you can get another one. You have 10 seconds to figure out what's missing from this picture. Do you think you know? If you said flip-flops, then you are correct. Good job, road crew. Bridge kids, I've had so much fun traveling with you today. I can't wait to see where we get to go next week. I can't wait to see what country, what souvenir we need to find. I can't wait to see what new name we get to discover, we get to call God. This series is gonna be so much fun. I can't wait for our next adventure, but remember, your adventure, it doesn't have to end right now. We have your coloring sheets and even games available for you and your family right here on our Bridge Kids page. Later today, we will be providing what we call table talk. These are questions to help keep our need to know conversation going around your family table. We will see all of you here virtually next week. Don't forget to check in with us via Facebook and Instagram for updates and some fun challenges we have going on throughout the week. God bless. We'll see you next week.